the rotation translation constraint is used to simulate the linear motion of a rack with the circular rotation of a pinion. It's important you understand that we're simply emulating this motion here. It's not a true physical interaction between components. Here on this assembly, if I move the rack or rotate the pinion, you can see they're both free to move independently from one another. I'll use undo to return them to their original positions. And then add the constraint. First, I'll zoom in so we have a better view of the geometry. Then, I'll click on the constraint icon, switch to the motion tab, and select the rotation translation type. Next, I'll select the pinion shaft and an edge of the rack. Now, I need to specify the distance the rack travels per revolution of the pinion. The easiest way to do this is to use the pitch diameter of the gear. I'll enter PI times 4.95. The default solution is forward, and I usually don't change it. If the pinion rotates in the wrong direction, I can just click on the constraint in the browser and make the distance value negative. I'll click OK, switch to the top view, and then move the rack. You can see the pinion stays in sync with the rack. Keep in mind this is only emulating the motion based on the pinion pitch diameter value I specified in the property manager. The gear teeth are not actually interacting and may in fact be overlapping. Also, the rack has a limit mate for its travel distance. If I drag the pinion, notice I can continue to rotate it after the rack stops moving. 